Fall is almost here. A Taiwanese beef noodle soup. Tender pieces of beef with slurp-worthy noodles swimming in a hot bowl of soup. This will definitely warm your insides and fill you up. Hey everyone, I'm Flo, Duda's Pan Camera, and we're all about simple food, simple faith. I cannot believe that fall is almost here. We are certainly feeling the drop in temperature, which I do appreciate, but it is time for noodle soup. Taiwanese beef noodle is often made with beef shank, but I found that it was three to four dollars more than what I paid for for the beef finger meat, which some of you may know is one of my favorite cuts of meat. I love beef finger meat because it is a super tender compared to say a stew meat, which I generally don't like to buy because stew meat is generally just all the extra cuts of meat that the butcher doesn't know what to do with and they put it in a package and call it stew meat. So you can have like really, really tough pieces of meat along with some really fatty pieces. But the beef finger meat is actually the meat in between the beef bones. And so it is, I've been told, it's kind of a cross between a short rib and, um, and ribeye. Who knew? Usually it comes in a vacuum sealed pack like this, often found in the freezer section. And sometimes they do sell it fresh as well, but it's, it'll still be packaged this same way. All right, so they're called finger meat because they look like long fingers, I guess, but really they're just like that part of the cow in between the ribs. I don't know if it's called anything else. You can Google it. Just Google beef finger meat and you'll learn so much about finger meat that you never knew you needed to know. I'm using about three and a half pounds here because that's how much that comes in this package. And I'm gonna cut these into about two inch pieces and I'm gonna parboil them before putting them into the main dish. Actually, it's very much like brisket, but brisket is so much more expensive. Even sometimes ground beef I find expensive. So this was $6.88 per pound on sale. Usually it runs about 10 to $11 per pound, I think. I won't buy it at that price. I will buy it at $6.88 a pound. So one thing about this cut is that it does require slow and slow, or in this case, we're gonna do it in the pressure cooker so that we can break down the meat. So it's kind of like a stew meat or a short rib that takes a long time of either braising or, or cooking for a long period of time to soften the meat. It's not like a steak. Don't use it in a stir fry. So for this recipe, you'll want about three pounds and I have three and a half pounds doesn't really matter. I'm going to use all three and a half and I'm going to parboil it right now to remove some of the impurities and I'll be right back. We're going to parboil it for five minutes. While the meat is parboiling, we have five minutes to prepare the other ingredients and I have three stalks of green onions. I'm going to use the white part in the soup. So I'm just going to leave those lengths like this. It's going in the soup and the rest of it, I'm gonna chop up and use as garnish at the end. Also using one onion, I'm gonna cut into eighths. Three pieces of garlic, smashed. The, I did better that time than I did with the mallet in the last video. Did you all see that one? But it's so much more satisfying with the mallet. A huge thumb size piece of ginger. <laughs> it's about an ounce. I'm just gonna smash that as well. It'll split into two, smash it further down, get more flavor out of it. Also using two dry chilies to spice things up. You can omit these if you don't want it spicy, or you can add more depending on how much heat you would like. All right, we're using our Instant Pot today. I'm gonna hit saute and leave it on normal instead of 
adjusting it to high, which I often do because I'm impatient. All right, adding a tablespoon of vegetable oil or whatever oil you're using and adding my ginger and garlic and chilies. Just cook that for couple of seconds, I guess. You start to smell the aroma of the ginger and the garlic. You can even smell the chilies in there. We're adding the onions and the white parts of the green onion. I'm going to cook that for about two to three minutes until the onion starts to become a little bit more translucent. Okay. Turn off the saute mode now. I'm going to add our beef. So this is the parboiled beef. It's already cooked. Well, not totally cooked, but you know what I mean. I rinsed the beef under the tap just to re remove any more of the debris from the meat. And it really does give a cleaner tasting broth. And if you decide that you don't want to parboil, you could just make the recipe as is, but just note that there will be a lot more scum and stuff that floats to the top. Totally up to you. Now for the sauces. I'm using two tablespoons of tomato paste. And you can check out my video on what to do with the remaining tomato paste, how to freeze it so that you can use it in future recipes. Using three tablespoons of a broad bean paste. This broad bean paste can be bought um, either spicy or regular flavored. This is regular because you know us, we can't handle the spiciness. So three tablespoons, I'm just estimating here. as per usual. This broad bean paste can also be used in a whole lot of different other recipes. So if you buy a jar of this and you follow my channel, I'll be using this more so that you can check it out, more recipes using it. All right, I'm using a measuring cup to measure the rest because I need a quarter cup. Quarter cup of Shaoxing wine. And Shaoxing wine is a rice wine. It adds flavor. That's what it does. Someone recently asked, why do you even use rice wine? It's kind of like using a wine in a risotto or a wine in a glaze or gravy. It just adds a depth of flavor that you wouldn't get otherwise. If you don't want to use the wine, you can just add more soy sauce because it does have some salt content in the wine. And, or you can use a, a dry sherry or we've been known to use bourbon in the past. Or even if you just want to use a white wine, you can do that as well. But if you want to eliminate it, don't bother using it at all. A quarter cup of dark soy sauce. And dark soy sauce will add color. It's not as salty as regular soy sauce. But if you didn't have dark soy, you can use regular soy sauce. And a quarter cup of regular soy sauce. That is going in. And we're gonna give that a stir. It may seem like a lot, but remember we have three and a half pounds of meat in here. And then we're going to add water because we're making a soup, a broth. By the way, I'm only using a six quart Instant Pot today. It will all fit in here. Using about a tablespoon of rock sugar and ancient Chinese secret, I don't know if it's true, but apparently rock sugar will make your meat more tender. It also adds some sweetness to balance out the flavors. I'm just throwing that in there. Then I have my whole spices that I'm gonna put in this disposable tea bag, if I can get it open. So I don't have to go digging for them. Uh, one cinnamon stick, two star anise, 
And it's the star anise that I don't want to go digging for because if this breaks up in the soup, you're going to have these little pods, little seeds, and if you bite into them because you've missed one or two, it's not a very good feeling. Nor taste, especially. <laughs> and two bay leaves. Also adding about a quarter teaspoon of a five spice powder, just into the, into the tea bag as well. And about a teaspoon of the Sichuan pepper. And if you have Sichuan peppercorn, that would be good to use as well, but this is all I have. So I'm gonna use about a teaspoon of this. Also putting that in the bag. And if you like your spices floating around in your soup, do that. You don't have to listen to me. That will, I'm just going to drop that into the middle. Then adding about six cups of water. You want there to be just enough water that will cover the ingredients. Okay, that's probably about five cups. Add a little bit more. Putting on the lid, locking it into place, making sure the sealing knob is on a ceiling. And we're going to pressure cook it on high for 45 minutes. And if you don't have an instant pot, you can do this same recipe on the stovetop. Do exactly the same thing up to this point, and then you're going to want to bring it to a boil and turn the heat down to simmer and let it sit on the stove for about three hours to get the same tenderness. We finished cooking, 45 minutes on high pressure, and I let it natural release for 15 minutes because when I'm making soup in the Instant Pot, I always find that if I, maybe I've filled it up too much, if I release it right away, all that pressure will like kind of spew out the top. I've had my messes. So I always let it sit for 15 minutes before I open it up. And it smells so good, you guys. Yep, and if you notice, there isn't that scum that you would see if I had not parboiled the meat all around the sides. But there is a lot of fat in here, so I'm gonna skim some of the fat and remove it. A little fat is good, too much fat is not good. And while I'm at it, I'm going to remove the bag of spices. It looks like it stayed intact. Right. Isn't that better than like having to fish out all the things? While the pressure was naturally releasing, I got my noodles and my vegetables ready to go. These were three to five minutes in boiling water and I just made them according to the package. And then I threw in the bok choy about a minute or two left of the cooking of the noodles, but you can do them separately if you'd like. And I'm using these fresh noodles. They're actually Korean, but they're a wheat noodle. And a wheat noodle goes really well with this dish. I'm spooning some meat in. See at home, you can have as much meat as you want. Do you know that a bowl of noodles like this will cost you about $16 out there? This pot of soup can feed about eight. So you do the math. It only cost me $34 for the meat and the bok choy and the noodles. And then of course all the other spices and uh, herbs and sauces I already had at home. So when you have all of the ingredients ready to go, it's not gonna cost you much at all. I found small packages of the pot herb mustard. It's a pickled mustard, it's a little bit salty, and it works really well in this dish. So I'm going to open this little package up and we're just gonna add a little bit to the soup. In fact, I'm just gonna put it in a bowl and people can spoon as little or as much as they want into it. This package is ready to go. Um, I have a recipe using this for a different recipe, but I did rinse it. But this one, I think you can just serve it as a condiment. And if you don't have this, you don't have to use it at all. The soup is gonna be super tasty just as it is. Okay, and then we're gonna add some green onions and cilantro. And again, if you don't want 
or don't like cilantro, you don't have to use it. Totally up to you. And there you go. How does that look? Oh, it looks amazing. It smells amazing. Are you all ready for? Oh yeah. The taste. Look at this bowl. And this bowl is, oh, I don't know. It's, it is way more food than you get in the restaurants. All right, so a little bit of the taste of the broth first, because when that lid opened up, it's like, wow. Mmm, a lot of depth in the smell, aroma. Oh yeah, super tasty. So, okay, I'm gonna take a bite of this. It smells awesome. Tender, tasty, the right texture, the right amount of fat and marbling. Oh yeah. So satisfying. This is awesome. Awesome, thanks dude. Mm -hmm. I actually love fall and winter when it comes to food because I love all that comfort that comes along with it. So for more noodles, soup noodles, check it out. I will see you over there.